Hello, and welcome to worship, friends. It's December now. Christmas time is coming. Here in the church, that means we are in the season of Advent. Advent is a time of waiting and preparation. The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming or arrival. Tonight, we will begin learning more about the season of Advent and what it means to us through a series called Company is Coming. We all get excited for company to visit our homes, right? Well, that's the same kind of excitement that's true at Christmas time. We are excited to remember the birth of Jesus and what it means in our lives, aren't we? But first things first, we need to get out our candles and turn them on and take a moment to remember that all of our friends are gathering with us in their homes all around Detroit Lakes and beyond. Now let's listen as the Erickson family reads our first Advent season reading and lights the first of our candles. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing. Like it used to be nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, 
O oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, to make your name known, so that nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope that you still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. It's Advent season. Christmas is coming. Are you ready? Am I ready? I have some decorations out, these stars. I have some tinsel, have my trees. I have some lists made. Gifts, shopping, groceries, post office, all these lists made. Who am I gonna be celebrating with this year? What kind of cookies should I make? Wow, I don't think I'm ready. Can you relate mom and dads? Kids, have you watched your parents get kind of crazy during this time of the year? There's a lot of work that goes into Christmas. Shopping for gifts, decorating the house and the church, baking and cooking. The lists don't end. And just when you think you might be caught up, you realize you need to add a few more to-dos to your list. And there's a couple of presents you forgot to get. And, ugh. I've run out of sugar. Will you take a step back with me? Will you promise me and yourself that you will set aside half an hour each week during this Advent season to meet here in the safe and quiet space in front of your computer to reset, to shut down for a bit, maybe, before you tackle your next to-do list. To take some time to rest. Advent is an exciting time, and Christmas is no doubt a magical season. But only if you don't let all of these things hijack your holiday. Let's face it, we never feel like we're ready for the holidays, do we? I mean, despite the fact that Halloween is every October 31st, Thanksgiving is around the fourth Thursday of every November, and Christmas always lands on December 25th. Those dates always seem to sneak up on us, though, don't they? Even in this crazy, semi-shut-down world because of the pandemic, it all feels like it's come so quickly. Let's try together to enjoy this season, to slow down a little, to reprioritize what we're doing with our lives now and what we hope for the future. For Christians, Advent falls in a nexus, a center point, an important place between the past and the future. There's joy in the remembering, in celebrating the birth of Christ. The historical observation of something that God did at one time, a long time ago. And there's joy in the anticipation of what's to come. The reminder that we're headed somewhere, that we're waiting for something that is not yet here. Before Jesus was born, we know Mary and Joseph and all the people of Israel were waiting for the birth of their Savior, waiting for him to come to earth and turn the world upside down, which is exactly what he did. Today, we're grateful for this thing that happened so many years ago. We're still defined by it, and we try to live differently because of it. But it is, to an extent, old news. We do this every year. We remember the birth of Jesus every single year. It's a case of been there, done that. Or is it? What are we waiting for? What are we looking for? Our first scripture reading tonight comes from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was an Old Testament prophet who lived way before Jesus was here. 
Being a prophet, Isaiah was able to proclaim the will of God through his ability to see into the future. He often told of things to come in the life of the Israelites. In chapter 64 of the book of Isaiah, he cries out to God saying, Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who will wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good and follow godly ways. But you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. Yet, no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore, you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We all are formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please, don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. We know this was written many, many years ago, but it has some great significance today, doesn't it? The title of the sermon tonight is This Place is a Mess. And boy, oh boy, if our world isn't a mess right now. And so what we long for this Advent season is not so much the historical remembrance we associate with Christmas, but we hope instead for a new reality a new encounter, a chance to start over again, fresh. Think of it this way. I bet this has happened to you, each and every one of you, myself included. Your parents have sent you to your room to clean it. Your first thought as you stumble through the door and flop onto your bed is, looks clean to me, right? <laughs> Never mind the pile of dirty clothes on the floor, or the stack of papers and other items that are teetering on the top of the desk that you can't even see the top of anymore? Is that a banana peel or an apple core? And there's that empty bag from the chips you finished last week. But it looks clean to me, you think. Or maybe you think it's clean enough. Now consider the room in this instance to be the world your world, your life. Isaiah comes along to ask us to take another look at our living space. Like our moms and dads, Isaiah stands at the door of our room and tells us that company is coming, and would you just take a look at this kind of squalor you're living in? And what would happen if the one you claim to be waiting for were to show up today? What if the one you want to come home tore open this door right here and came charging into this room? What then? Would your space be clean or just clean enough? Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, Isaiah cries on our behalf. We know that you are present, God. Our faith tells us that you're here. But we need to know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Shake us up so we can be certain again. We've begun to wonder. We've begun to doubt. So do it again, Lord. Do it again. There is where our historical observance comes in. There is where telling the story becomes so important. Not just so that we can look back with a sigh and long for the good old days, not so that we can wistfully wish for the blessing that they had back in the day, but so we can learn to recognize it when it comes again. That is the task of Advent, to pay attention to what is and what might be, not simply to look back at what was. 
The people of God were in exile. The foundations of their nation had been shaken. The comforts that they had begun to take for granted were taken from them. The human institutions that they had constructed no longer held the security that they had begun to take for granted. So they began to look elsewhere, and they realized that their faith was shaky too. They needed a boost, so they looked back, and they looked forward at the same time. Advent is a reminder for us to get out of our sense of complacency, out of the things that we have accepted as the new normal, out of the ruts and routines we're stuck in. Jesus understood this need as well. And in the book of Mark, chapter 13, Jesus prophesies in a similar way to Isaiah, as saying, At that time, after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. I know that this proclamation Jesus makes can sound a bit scary, but rest assured that this is a promise from God, a promise that should give us all hope. It's a reminder to us that God will come again, and he will take all of his children home with him. He will come again and save us all from an eternity of doom and gloom. He will come again and heal our bodies, our communities, and our world. And in the meantime, we can do some of that healing right here, from right where you're at. Anywhere you go in your life, you can be the hands and feet and mouths of God, spreading kindness and love and healing to others despite the circumstances of this world, despite the difficult situations we have found ourselves in. You have the power to change things. You have the power to change lives. Sometimes all it takes is one word or a smile or a hug. You can help to begin to clean this mess up and know that you are doing the work of the Advent season. So take some time to set aside the lists, set aside the decorations, sit down and be still. And think. Think of and realize that this place is a mess. We are a mess. And then begin to do the work of cleaning up. Next Wednesday, when we get together, we'll talk more about this process of cleaning. Will you join me and be part of the cleaning crew? The cares of this life weigh us down, and we seek escape more than insight avoidance rather than confrontation with God's truth. God comes to us even when we are hiding from the best we know. God waits to hear our story and to restore us to life as it is meant to be. Let us come to God in a prayer of confession. Please pray with me. We confess, dear God, that our sense of anticipation has been dulled. We have ceased to expect any wonders from your hand. We do not see the marvels around us in the people and happenings we view as commonplace. We are not alert to your presence or your actions on our behalf. Wake us up, God. Pardon and redeem us that we may escape the judgment we are bringing on ourselves. Send your light that it may shine through us into a needy world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning.
Before we leave, let us say our benediction together, which is our church mission statement. Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To who? To all. And where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Thank you so much and have a blessed Advent season.